Welcome to this Pearl of Laboratory Medicine brought to you by AACC and the Clinical Chemistry Trainee Council. View this and many more pearls as well as other free educational material at traineecouncil.org. Hello, my name is Dr. Idi Asayori. I am Assistant Lab Director at Inu Food and an instructor at University of the People and a part-time consultant for Trinity Laboratory Services. Welcome to this pearl of laboratory medicine on gene dosage analysis. At the end of this presentation, I hope you will have learned about gene dosage effects, understand the tests that are available for gene dosage analysis, have a working knowledge on current trends in gene dosage research, treatment, and practice. Here's the outline for this presentation. We'll start with a general introduction and review some terms to gain an appreciation for understanding gene dosage. Next, we'll talk about how we test for gene dosage effects and how we perform gene dosage analysis by utilizing genome-wide approaches, such as next-generation sequencing and whole exome sequencing. Then we'll review current trends in research. For example, the majority of literature on gene dosage seems to focus on cancer research and drug therapy. What are gene dosage effects? The gene dosage effect occurs when the structural gene produces a proportional amount of product to its copy number. There's an appropriate dose for every gene, so too much or too little expression of a given gene or set of genes can result in cellular dysfunction and disease. The more copies of a gene, the more gene product is expressed and vice versa, which also means the less copies of a gene, the less that gene's product is going to be expressed or maybe no gene product will be expressed. For example, let's look at Down syndrome. The gene expression on chromosome 21 has increased by 50%. Why? Because the number of copies of chromosome 21 has increased from two to three or trisomy 21. But is it really always that simple? Can we always follow the general rule of thumb? Well, yes and no. It depends and it's also complicated because the number of genes may or may not have any dosage effects. The number of a particular gene may cause a dosage effect on a different set of genes and their gene products. The number of repeats varies between individuals and we call these polymorphisms. Different gene alterations result in different gene dosage effects. For example, Single nucleotide variants, or SNPs, as the name implies, is when a single nucleotide is substituted for another. The image shows the single nucleotide substitution of adenine to thymine. SNVs can be rare in one population, but common in another. When a SNV is present in at least 1% of the population, then it is referred to as a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. As you can imagine, different types of mutations will result when one nucleotide is substituted for another. There are three kinds of SNP mutations or point mutations. One is a synonymous mutation, which is also known as a silent mutation. This is when a nucleotide substitution does not result in a change in amino acid. Another SNV mutation is a non-synonymous mutation or a missense. This is when a nucleotide substitution leads to an amino acid substitution. This may or may not result in a pathogenic variant depending on the effect of the amino acid substitution on protein function and structure. If a missense mutation does not result in a pathogenic variant, then it is considered to be a conservative missense mutation where the function of a protein is only slightly changed and the properties of that amino acid remain the same. In a non-conservative missense mutation, a completely different kind of amino acid is produced, thus results in a completely different protein. For example, in sickle cell anemia, the beta coding gene on chromosome 11 suffers a non-conservative missense mutation where, as the image shows, adenine is switched with thymine and the GAG codon for glutamic acid is changed to a GTG codon prevailing. Hence, sickle cell anemia is an example of a gene dosage effect resulting from two abnormal copies of the beta globin gene. Why? 
because inheriting two abnormal copies results in fewer or no copies of the normal beta globin gene. Stop, gain, start, loss, or nonsense mutations is when the nucleotide substitution results in a stop codon that consequently results in either premature protein truncation or a protein that is non-functional or a reduction in protein production or in the worst case scenario, the elimination of protein production. For example, cystic fibrosis, similar to sickle cell, is an example of a gene dosage effect from inheriting two mutated copies of the CFTR gene or cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance gene located on chromosome 7, Q3, 1.2. Sometimes nonsense mutations are due to a deletion of one or more nucleotides. And at other times, nonsense mutations could be due to a single nucleotide polymorphism. Insertion and deletions, also known as indels, usually contain less than 50 base pairs of DNA that has either been inserted into or deleted from the genome. Indels always result in frame shift mutations. The image shows an example of a frame shift mutation that occurred when adenine was inserted in between both CAT codons, thus changing the reading frame from CAP, CAT to CAT, ACA, TCA, and so on. Where indels are less than 50 base pairs, structural mutations happen when genome rearrangement is more than 50 base pairs. Structural variations can be the result of indels, inversions, translocations, duplications, or a combination of all. Copy number variation, or CNV, is a type of structural variation that changes the number of copies of specific regions of DNA. These regions can either be deleted or duplicated. The number of copies of a particular gene varies from one individual to the next. About two thirds of the human genome are repeats. Out of those repeats, 4.8 to 9.5% are classified as CNV. CNVs are defined as segments of DNA, one kilo of base or greater, and are present in variable copy number compared to a reference genome. CNVs can arise due to a homologous recombination between repeated sequences or non-homologous recombination mechanisms that occur throughout the genome. CNVs can be rare, which means that they occur in about less than 1% in the population or common, where variants are observed in greater than 5% of the population. When CNVs aren't inherited, they are de novo, meaning they spontaneously arise in the population and may or may not contribute to familial transmission. For example, autism spectrum disorder is associated with high risk of CNV mutations that arise de novo. CNV structural gains can be the result of duplications or insertional transpositions. CNV structural losses or deletions can be heterozygous, which means only one copy is missing. They can be homozygous, which means both copies are missing or hemizygous, which means one copy is present. Interestingly, CNV variation can also be observed in individuals with a normal phenotype. So in essence, CNV is the cause and gene dosage is the effect. Sometimes those copy number variants include several normal genes or dosage sensitive genes. Bottom line, CNVs and dosage influence a wide range of traits, which are associated with disease risk and explains some disorders that result from de novo mutations. Research is showing that disease risk is commonly associated with CNV and dosage sensitive genes. For example, maladaptive CNVs and gene dosage effects are associated with psychiatric disorders, cardiomyopathies, Amyotropic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, in addition to SMPs, is also associated with rare CNVs. Huntington disease, or HD, is a dominantly inherited neurodegenerative disorder. It's a neurodegenerative disorder where CAG repeats occur 
more than 36 times in the Huntington gene. This means that the small CAG repeat length associated with the Huntington phenotype has a cutoff of about 36. But repeat lengths of 36 to 39 CAG have been found in asymptomatic elderly individuals. Individuals with 27 to 35 CAG repeats are unaffected by the disease. These unaffected individuals have increased CAG tract sizes compared to the general population. The normal dosage of a gene is two because most genes present in the human genome are found in two copies. So if there are two functional copies of a gene, there is a normal dosage of the gene and a normal gene product expression. If there are more than two functional copies of a gene, then the gene is amplified and gene product becomes overexpressed, resulting in cellular abnormalities and possible disease progression, for example, cancer. Gene dosage can also be affected by a loss of one functional gene copy, so the gene product is underexpressed or not expressed at all. For example, disorders such as intellectual disability and developmental delay. Dosage compensation is a way to equalize or balance the expressions of genes. For example, dosage compensation can be seen in sex chromosomes. Female cells have double the number of X chromosomes as male cells. Therefore, female cells should express twice the amount of X chromosome genes more than male cells, but they don't. Male and female cells express X chromosome genes at the same level. How? Because of dosage compensation, which can happen either by random X inactivation where females shot off expression of one of the two Xs matching male single X expression or two-fold transcription of an X where males could increase expression of some genes on their one X chromosome or decrease transcription of both Xs by either males or females, for example, one of the two X chromosomes is selected to be shut down early in development in a process known as X chromosome inactivation. Types of dosage and compensation. One type is the copy number of the structural gene is proportional to the amount of product produced. There are also direct transacting effects in which a gene is modulated in expression in direct correlation with the different chromosomal dosage. Dosage and compensation can also be indirect or dosage compensation can also be the result of when the expression of a gene is inversely correlated with the dosage of another chromosomal region. In this case, dosage compensation will not change or affect expression because an inverse dosage effect of an aneuploid region includes genes that are also on the altered chromosome. The combined structural gene and inverse dosage can produce nearly equal expression on all chromosomal doses. So the two effects, the structural gene on the altered chromosome and the inverse dosage combined together cancel to produce nearly equal expression in all chromosomal doses. In summary, gene dosage effects are not as simple as having more or less of one gene copy or that, that multiple gene copies results in phenotypic dysfunction. The phenomena of seeing certain individuals with a few damaging mutations who are severely diseased compared to others harboring multiple potential deleterious mutations who appear phenotypically normal complicates gene dosage effects. For example, Parkinson's disease. Evidence has shown that genetic causes can vary depending on the geographic and ethnic backgrounds of certain study populations. Gene product expression varies, which means it could be more or less depending on the variation disease and disease phenotype expression varies. Also, gene dosage mechanisms vary. For example, gene dosage effects could occur due to structural genetic aberrations like deletions, duplications, indels, and so on, or variations in length. You can have the short binucleotide repeats like AC, 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 or short trinucleotide repeats like CAG in Huntington's disease. 
or long repeats with entire genes repeated. Gene dosage effects could also be the result of loss of function mutations. To add another layer of complexity, dosage compensation mechanisms vary, like direct trans effect, indirect, and so on. How do we test for gene dosage effects? How do we perform gene dosage analysis? What are genome-wide approaches for testing? Under cytogenetic and molecular testing, we have karyotyping, which is looking at chromosome images to identify abnormal chromosome number or structure. FISH, fluorescent in situ hybridization, which is the first molecular method able to detect submicroscopic genomic CNBs, but it is a time-consuming method that requires prior knowledge of the regions of the interest for probing, so FISH is not used for genome-wide analysis. On the other hand, microarray is a genome-wide approach that lets us scan the entire genome for abnormalities in particular CNBs. CGH, which is comparative genome hybridization, SNP, which is single nucleotide polymorphisms, both are microarray technologies currently used to identify CNBs, but they cannot detect short CNBs. Sequencing, on the other hand, can detect low frequency variations. Two sequencing methods are NGS, next generation sequencing, and WES, whole exome sequencing. PCR, polymerase chain reaction. QPCR, quantitative real-time PCR, is an effective method for screening CNV-targeted genomic regions. However, this technique does not allow the simultaneous amplification and quantification of large number targets in a single region. MPCR retina, multiplex PCR-based real-time invader assay. MLPA, multiplex litigation dependent probe amplification, is an alternative targeted PCR-based approach that allows simultaneous analysis of multiple targets with one primer pair, reducing the probability of obtaining spurious qPCR results due to different reaction conditions. Other notable approaches include paralog ratio test, PRT, molecular copy number counting, MCC, multiplex PCR-based approaches such as multiplex amplificable probe hybridization or MAPH, quantitative multiplex PCR of short fluorescent fragments, also known as QMPSF, and multiplex amplicon quantification, MAQ. Current trends in research look at gene dosage variation and how the associated changes in gene expression influence a wide variety of traits in humans, plants, disease, and so on. CNVs can affect phenotype through gene dosage or disrupting functional genes. Therefore, CNVs can be exposed to selection pressure during evolution. In addition to SNPs, a consistent number of common and rare CNVs are associated with disease. CNV has been recognized as a predominant source of genetic variation among human individuals. A lot of gene dosage research seems to focus on cancer and drug therapy. As studies relating CNV to diseases expand, our understanding of human diversity, the causes and development of complex diseases, and disease resistance will grow accordingly, which will allow the development of improved diagnostic and treatment strategies and more personalized medicine in the form of pharmacogenetics. Pharmacogenetics aims to study the gene variants associated with drug metabolism enzymes, transporters, drug receptors, and relieve the burden of sickness caused by inter-individual differences in drug response or vulnerabilities to drug to toxicity. For example, the CYP2D6 gene on chromosome 22 is a key drug metabolizing gene, which not only harbors multiple genetic variants known to affect enzyme function, but also shows a broad range of copy number and hybrid alleles in various patient populations. Genome editing 
is a way of making changes to specific parts of the genome, like adding, removing, or altering particular locations in the genome. Currently, most research on genome editing is done to understand diseases using cells and animal models. Scientists are still working to determine whether this approach is safe and effective for use in people. It is being explored in research on a wide variety of diseases, including single gene disorders, such as cystic fibrosis, hemophilia, and sickle cell disease. Gene therapy is a type of treatment that uses genetic material to hopefully change the course of the disease. A popular vector or envelope is the adeno-associated virus or AAV. Though many gene therapies are currently in early research or clinical trials, some have already been approved by the US Food and Drug Administration or FDA. Gene therapy research begun over 40 years ago. Our understanding combined with technological advances has greatly advanced the field. In 2017, after extensive research in labs and in human clinical trials around the world, the first gene therapies were approved by the FDA for use in the United States. As of January 2020, the FDA has approved two gene therapy products. Additionally, two gene-based cellular immunotherapies were approved by the FDA as of January 2020. To date, the FDA has received more than 900 applications to investigate gene therapy in clinical trials. This is part of a new age of medicine whose foundations lay in gene dosage effects. For more like this, as well as articles, podcasts, and more, please visit the Trainee Council at traineecouncil.org.